Raiders! Oakland, LA, Oakland, Vegas, Raider Nation, wherever, forever! You got your old Uncle Mosh and Raiders fan radio from Murph's Man Cave, taking a lighter journey into the dark side. Sit back, put your feet up, pop a top, and enjoy the ride. Here we go! We miss you, we love you, and we'll see you in the Hall of Fame. When you have great coaches, then after you have great coaches, you get great players, you have a great organization. And you tell them one thing, just win, baby. Way up the middle, intercepted to the piano at the 50. I'm running down, Houston football, and I think Houston victory. The Houston Raiders have scored on the most famous, unbelievable, absolutely impossible dream of a play. Well, I love this team. I think this team can win. I think this team can win. What is up, Raider Nation? Your buddy Murph back, uh, I would say, once again for a Super Bowl highlight show, but I'm not back once again. I'm back once again on Raiders Fan Radio. I'm back once again on the Twitch, but here for the first time ever doing this uh, uh, Super Bowl highlight watch party. So uh, I hope this, uh, anybody that's joining or, or, or watching afterwards, I uh, hope this is fun. I hope it works. <laughs> this is a completely new thing for me. Um, so anyways, so uh, or venture for us anyways, uh, kind of embracing this whole Twitch thing. Uh, you know, we weren't much uh, for the Twitch until uh, uh, my two teenage boys were like, Dad, you really need to take your show onto the Twitch. And so in doing that, we started putting the regular show on Twitch and now realize like you can do all this other cool stuff too so um so i had the idea to do a watch party so we're gonna watch the raiders three uh nfl film super bowl uh highlight reels uh super bowl 11 15 and 18 and of course capped off the third one uh is black sunday the uh just the absolute greatest nfl films production ever uh narrated by john facenda the legendary john facenda the last thing he ever narrated has the best lines the best dialogue it's it's just it's awesome so uh anyway so we're going to kick it off here with super bowl 11 i would be remiss if i didn't say uh happy super bowl sunday to everybody um Thank you again for joining us. Uh, we, we got a Discord uh, channel up. I see Kill Jadis is in there. What's up, brother? Um, and uh, so, but anyways, uh, so happy Super Bowl to everybody. And uh, and let's. This has been a great week for the Raiders. We had, uh, of course, the the Al Davis thirty for thirty. Uh, Al, uh, Al Davis versus the NFL that just came out this week. Uh, and then now today we have the induction of, or at least the announcement of, uh, of Charles Woodson and, um, and Tom Flores getting inducted into the Hall of Fame and also Wayne Mabry, the violator. Um, so this is going to be a very Raider centric. Hey, what's up, Kill Jadis? What's up, brother? So this is going to be a very Raiders uh, centric, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, Hall of Fame induction ceremony coming up this summer, and uh, we certainly hope to be there for that. So, uh, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. So, we're going to kick it off. Let's see if I can get this to work. Let's see. Here we go. All right, so here we go. We got Super Bowl 11. So, what we're going to be watching, I suppose I should show you this too. I have these old DVDs. I've had these things for a million years. It's the, uh, it's the Super Bowl Champions Collector Series. And so, we're going to be watching these. What's up, Ron the Materator? Ron's in the chat there. Uh, so yeah, so we're gonna be. I've got these old DVDs, and I have, I have these ones too. These are like the like they have the like the Super Bowl set. So I had these ones. What's up, Mutant Raider? Um, anyways, I got these ones, but then these ones are Raider specific, and these are cool because they have like like little like documentaries on like Kenny Stabler and like all kinds of other little things that go along with them. It's not just the the Super Bowl highlights, but um, anyway, so let's go ahead and kick it off. Let's get to uh, Super Bowl eleven. And so we get to the right spot in the video. It was strictly. Okay, here we go. This is the credits for the other one. Stadium in Pasadena. 
Pasadena, California. It is Super Bowl XI. This is Bill King with a welcome. Everything in the United States, everything really in a sports sense in the world, is zeroed in, focused today here in the canyon at Arroyo Seco. This 11th Super Bowl will be viewed in 41 nations around the world. Bill King's mustache is on point. In Pasadena, California, the Raiders of Oakland and Vikings of Minnesota se enfrentan in the Super Tazón número 11. The Raiders of Oakland, champion of the Conference American, and the Vikings of Minnesota, champion of the Conference National. C'est la confrontation tant attendue entre Francis Tarkenton des Vikings et Ken Stabler des Raiders. As my leader, Curtis Cowboy Gowdy out of Cheyenne, Wyoming, and Jeff and Hazel's baby boy sit at the foot of the San Gabriel Mountains, rising a little over a mile, the snow-covered mountains, and the fall foliage is drifting slowly down to the base of this Rose Bowl here in Pasadena. We are about to bring to you the 11th Super Sunday Super Bowl. Let's go! Funny how you can have those, you can have the Super Bowl on the Rose Bowl or anything. You do that nowadays, people laugh at you because the venue needs more people to be, to be involved in all more people than to watch the actual Super Bowl. All right, it's so old school, huh? What's up, finger skate? Appreciate you jumping in. I love this kid. He gets so bummed out as this thing goes on. Conflict. Pro football's two most successful teams in a final struggle for the most treasured victory in the game. Neither the Raiders nor the Vikings had ever won a Super Bowl. But over the last 10 years, they have been the most consistent winners in the National Football League. The Raiders, a team built by Al Davis and coached by John Madden, have won divisional titles in nine of the last 10 years. The Vikings, coached by Bud Grant, have played in more Super Bowls than any team in history. Oh, that poor Vikings kid. <laughs> so sad for him. <laughs> in the opening minutes of the game, both teams probed and tested one another piecing together bits of strategy in search of a successful pattern. Look at Otis Sistrunk. The contest was a standoff until late in the first quarter when the Raiders were forced to punt. One man behind the line of scrimmage on the rush. Here comes the kick. It is blocked. It's blocked by uh -oh. It was a golden opportunity for Minnesota. But the Vikings, just one yard from the goal line, never got there. Let's go, Foo! Brent McClanahan fumbled. Willie Hall, number 39, recovered the ball for Oakland. Oh, Villapiano blowing him up at the goal line. Sit down, Vikings kid. The Vikings lost the initiative. Now the Raiders would seize it. 
Oakland launched its counterattack with a play that would be a harbinger of bad times for Minnesota. Clarence Davis ran left for a 35-yard gain. Quarterback Ken Stabler moved the Go Raiders snake. across midfield with two passes to Dave Casper, Oakland's leading receiver in 1976. Casper was once an offensive tackle for Notre Dame. Now, as a tight end, he is the power gear in Oakland's freewheeling pass offense. Casper's oh, second God, reception put the Raiders in position for the first score of the game. Field goal, snap, spot, kick on the way. That one's good, and the Raiders it John away. Madden gets about three inches of air there on that jump. No hops in coach. had marched 90 yards in 12 plays. Although they were stopped short of a touchdown, they had moved smartly through every avenue of their game plan. The next time they had the ball, they would take the same road. Only this time, it would lead them to the land of six. When the Raiders regained possession of the ball, they continued to run to their left. This strategy succeeded because of Oakland's ability to dominate the right side of the Viking defense, which consists of Alan Page, Jim Marshall, and number 58 corner linebacker Wally Hilgenberg. Guard Gene Upshaw pushed Page to the inside. Tackle Art Shell shoved Marshall to the outside. And when Hilgenberg came up to fill the hole, he was removed by Mark Van Egan. Look at even Branch getting up Brian in there, Davis, throwing a block. Number 28 gained 137 yards in the Super Bowl. Freddie B. 105 Everybody's of them blocking. came on variations of this play. The secret of its success was not only the powerful blocking of Upshaw and Shell, but also the blocking of running back Mark Van Egan who neutralized the corner linebacker and gave Davis room to run. Hilgenberg has been a linebacker in the NFL for 13 years, but in spite of his experience and skill, he could not avoid the battering blocks of Van Egan. During the regular season, Van Egan had gained twice as much yardage as Davis, but in this Super Bowl, he was more valuable to his team as a blocker. With Van Egan hitting out on Minnesota's corner linebackers, the other Oakland running backs were able to turn upfield for solid gains. Three carries by Carl Garrett, number 31, moved the Raiders to the Viking six. With Minnesota expecting another run, Stabler surprised them with a perfectly thrown sideline pass to Fred Beletnikov, who touched down at the one yard line. On the next play, the Raiders resumed oh, stick their attack on, Fred. on Minnesota's right Cracks side. But instead of plowing through it, they sailed over it on an easy pass from Ken Stabler to Dave Casper. Ha! Holy Toledo! The Oakland line is just wiping out Minnesota's front. Already, Bill, on that left side, they're going to Marshall and Hilgenberg, two older players, not very big, seemingly not very strong in the early going. With five minutes to play in the second period, the Raiders marched to their second touchdown. The key play in this drive was a 17-yard pass to Fred Boletnikov. A brilliant work of art by the master of his position, Fred Boletnikov, first and goal on the half-yard line. Here's the power formation right side. Hand off to Banizak, he powers. Over. Oh, I think I think Coach got four inches of, of lift on that one. Joshua Heifetz never played a violin with more dexterity than Kenny Stabler is playing the Minnesota Viking defense this afternoon in the Rose Bowl Stadium in Pasadena.
The Raiders' domination of the first half was reflected not only in the score, but also in the man-to-man -man matchups that as much as any one thing often decide the outcome of a game. Legal hands to the face, right? Again, you don't get no such thing as a face mask apparently in, in Super Bowl uh, Eleven. A big reason for the success of Oakland's well, running game was the so way high, Art Shell number seventy-eight <laughs> consistently eliminated <laughs> Jim Marshall. Shell was so overpowering that Marshall did not make a tackle the whole game. I love that man. This is like a Hall of Fame front four middle for the Vikings. Jeff Seaman and neutralized him in another matchup that often ended in Oakland's favor. Dalby disrupted Seaman's angle of pursuit, then shoved him into the backwash of Oakland's churning ground attack. While Dalby and Shell won their battles at the scrimmage line, Fred Beletnikoff was winning another in the open field of the secondary. Nate Wright, number 43, had been given the unenviable task of trying to cover Beletnikoff. As might be expected, he did not fare well. Yeah. Both of Oakland's touchdowns Otto. were set up by passes to Beletnikoff. Always. The most dangerous receiver in Minnesota's passing attack is Sammy White, number 85. White led the NFC with 10 touchdown catches, but Skip Thomas, number 26, guarded White so closely that he did not catch a single pass in the first half. Look at that. Beautiful. The Raiders used not one man, but 11 to stop Minnesota's mighty running back, Chuck Foreman, number 44. Viking fans had hoped to see some of the magic Foreman had displayed all season when he led Minnesota in rushing, receiving, and touchdowns. But today, there was only one moment of magic, and that was this catch and run that gained 26 yards. Come on, Phil. Grab, grab, grab. No arm tackling, foo. It was Foreman's only escape from the clutches of John Madden's determined defenders, who permitted him only 42 yards rushing for the entire game. With Foreman unable to run with the ball and White unable to catch it, Minnesota's offense was on the verge of extinction. I love the terminology, man, of Facenda. In the third quarter, the Vikings fell like extinction. further behind. A Raider field goal made it 19 to nothing. If there was fire in the ashes of the Vikings' hopes, quarterback Fran Talkington was now the only person who could change the flicker to a flame. Throwing passes on almost every play, Talkington moved his team 68 yards in 13 plays to their first touchdown of the game. Chuck Foreman and Ahmad Rashad, number 28, made key receptions in the drive. Sammy White made his first catch of the day, and it was good for a touchdown. Oh, touchdown, Sammy White! The touchdown roused the Viking defense for the first time in the game, Stabler lost yard. Ah! 
As the final period began, Talkington resumed his passing attack. But this time, the Raiders were ready, and plays that had worked earlier were no good at all now. Our freaking secondary was just so freaking dominant. Without a running attack and needing two touchdowns to win, Talkington had to pass against a defense that had no reason to play him honest. Let's go, Otis! The Raiders' rush, though formidable, <laughs> posed no unusual problem. Look at Otis down there talking to him. The real dangers lurked in the secondary. Let's go! Back to pass goes Tarkinen. He's going down the middle, and White makes bah! the catch. He is and Tom said, I'll take that. Losing their helmet. <laughs> flying one way, helmet the other. Okay, he did. There's Phil. With four Get him, linebackers and four defensive backs, the Raiders surrounded Atkinson, and terrorized man. Hawkington's oh. receivers. Boom. I love George's eyes on that, man. So locked in. This might be my favorite part. Either this or the old man Willie, but this right here. <laughs> Oakland eliminated Talkington's targets, narrowed his field of fire, and finally proved the undoing of everything he had hoped to accomplish. Back to pass on third. The rush by Hendricks peels him out of there to the left. He's back pedaling and throwing. Intercepted by Willie Hall at the 30. Back to the 40. Runs into traffic. Later football. He's brought down at the 46-yard line. The Raiders now had a choice of two plans. They could fence and parry to protect their lead, or they could attack to destroy and demolish. <laughs> Yeah, we'll go with destroy and demolish. A 48-yard pass to Fred Boletnikoff put the Raiders two yards away from a touchdown that would end the competitive phase of Super Bowl XI. Ends the competitive phase. <laughs> the best. And run up a daggum score. Not this pussy ass freaking. Oh, let's the Vikings the trail let's by 19 no, points, and the, the remaining seven up. minutes of the game <laughs> became a Our goal to dominate, not just to win, right? For the goal they knew they would never reach. Aww. So sad. Let me go sit down and with Vikings kid console each other. The Raiders closing in on the Super Bowl championship. Not Raiders yet. Well, you gotta do this first. Let's go, Willie! Willie Brown! 45, 40, 45, 40, 45, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, I think greatest shot ever in NFL films history right there. After winning more games than any team in the NFL oh, man, over the last 14 years, 
the Raiders proved to the whole world something their fans had known for a long, long time. Super Bowl victory for the Oakland Raiders. A victory won not only for this season, but for seasons past. A victory that set a magnificent crown on the Oakland Raiders' unrivaled 14-year reign as football's winningest team. I love the story Madden tells about that, about them picking him up. <laughs> they didn't keep him up there very long. Oh, my gosh. So good. Yeah, so it's funny because they, they didn't keep Madden up there very long. And uh, when you hear him tell the story, it's like um, he freaking falls down. Like, right, like they're very kind to him in that NFL film shot because he freaking falls down like right after that. <laughs> He starts like falling down on like, uh, like on photographers and stuff. It was pretty funny. I love hearing Madden tell that story. Um, all right, next up, we're gonna go to Super Bowl 15, of course, which is very apropos, considering that uh, Mr. Flores is now uh, going to be a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So we'll get to that here next. Um, in the chat, appreciate everybody in the chat. Raider Roos in there, mutant and the Raider. Camera guy got in the way and they tripped and fell. <laughs> yeah, camera guy got. Yeah, there's Kill Janus. He's on our Discord. Uh, yeah, isn't that funny? Kill Jada, so he gets in, he gets uh, he gets in the way and like falls down on the dude. It's pretty good. Um, if you guys want to join in the Discord, I'm not sure how to how to link that in here, but we do have a Discord up and running. Uh, just look for Raiders Fan Radio on Discord, and uh, please feel free to jump in and, and chat with us live as it's going. I'm having a little trouble hearing some of the chat, uh, but uh, the live chat, um, the voice chat, but um, but I'm trying to keep up with the best I can in there for sure. Um, but yeah, but keep it coming, jump in there. But yeah, Ronda Mater Raider, Mutant Raider, Finger Skate, appreciate all of you. Finger Skate asks, um, who are we going to see win today? Um, gosh, I don't, uh, we kind of doing all this in protest because I, we hate these teams so much, but I can't root for the Chiefs. Even if I think they're going to win, I can't even tell you uh, that the Chiefs are going to win. So I'm all about the freaking stupid ass Buccaneers today. I hate that. <laughs> but yeah. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, Super Bowl 15. Let's go to, uh, of course, we're going to New Orleans, the Superdome. Uh, let's see, it's 2231. Let me get this queued up here. All right, and we are right there. All right, here we go. Enjoy, fellas. January the 25th, 1981. America welcomes home 52 of its bravest amid the color and excitement of Super Bowl 50. What a day. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. It's like a dream come true. It's unbelievable. Yes, and we're going to win. We are going to win. Yes, no you question. are, Lester. Confident champions of the American Football Conference, the Oakland Raiders danced into this prestigious ball wearing glass slippers. If ever there was a Cinderella champion, it was these men in silver and black. Their quarterback, Jim Plunkett, had salvaged a wrecked career to become the NFL's comeback player of the year. And in only his second season, head coach Tom Flores directed a team with 14 new players through the wild card playoffs and into the Super Bowl. Shrewdly built by owner Al Davis, Oakland reflected the cool, professional attitude of a team accustomed to meaningful games. This was all new to the NFC champion Philadelphia Eagles, since Dick Vermeil had molded a winner out of a former loser. Because their personality mirrored his discipline and determination, 
these Eagles were often given more credit for being hard workers than good football players. <laughs> However, in November, these that tough is. Eagles had beaten the Raiders 10 to 7, mainly by sacking Jim Plunkett eight times. It was here, in one of the season's most physical encounters, the initial battle lines were drawn for Super Bowl XV. Well, I learned that uh, from uh, uh, getting close to Jaworski and knocking him down a couple times that he wears uh, English, English leather. leather. Jerry Sizemore wears Aramis. And the uh, guy, Pete Perot, that second year guy from southwest uh, Louisiana, he doesn't wear any cologne. He, he doesn't even use deodorant, I don't think. <laughs> Super Bowl 15 featured the most legend, striking man. contrast in opponents since Darth Vader first crossed lasers with Luke Skywalker. Go. Let's go! Hey guys, we only have 60 minutes to get it done, so no sense in waste. Start on the first play and give it everything you got on every snap, huh? Good luck to all of you, huh? Here we go. And Super Bowl 15 is upon us. First down. On the game's third play, down, Dick Vermeil six. called. Double, double base pass 46 47, check with me. Dick. For Vermeil and his coaching staff in the press box above, yeah. it proved to be a play action pass that they immediately regretted. Play fake. Back is Jaworski with time to throw. He's got Spag. Kills one. Intercepted. Rob Martin. Oh, Ronnie. No. Threw it right to him. Okay. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he went cover six and the linebacker came off. Rod Martin, who was once cut by the Raiders, made the first big takeaway of the game from his outside linebacker position. Instead of lofting the ball over Martin, Jaworski fired hard and low, aiming for a seam in the Raiders' zone that turned out to be a mirage. Yeah, that's a horrible pass. There ain't no zone there. Like, there's no alley for that ball at all. Proved to be a harbinger of bad times for the Eagles. Thanks, Mutant Raider. Appreciate that, buddy. Yeah, we have, we have fun with all this stuff, man. Appreciate your kind words. Thank you. Plunkett drops back to pass. Steps up. He looks. Over the middle. He's got it. Touchdown Raiders. It's touch by foot branch. There's the next guy that needs to go into the Hall of Fame right there. 21. Almost like a dart. Only quick thinking by Jim Plunkett saved the touchdown. His step up forced linebacker Frank LeMaster to commit forward, creating a crease just big enough for a dart. The Raiders struck first, but on Philadelphia's third possession, the Eagle offense finally took wing. Things interesting about this video too, like those overhead shots. Since we were in the dome, first time we got to see that. But then also the coaches. Looking, being chased out of the pocket of the right. He's got running room, directing play, going deep, a bomb to the end zone. It is a touchdown. He got it. Touchdown, Oh, we got a penalty. Oh, we got a flag. Who's the penalty on? Dang, gone rotten touchdown call back. Was that on Harold Dick? Yeah, so you like now it's Wide we take it so for granted the mic'd up, but back in the day, man, you never heard this stuff. Canceling Philadelphia's chance to tie the score. This play left the Eagles in a state of shock from which they never seemed to recover. 
For the Raiders, on the other hand, an unusual reversal of Murphy's law began. As everything Coach. that could go right, did go right. Here comes the rush. Steps up. Can't find anybody yet. Takes off running to the left. Throws on the move. Let's go, 33. House call. The pass covered 80 yards. A Super Bowl record. It opens up the bag of tricks. Bucket on a third down play that time. Got good blocking, couldn't find the receivers. Skidded around to get open, and when Herm Edwards gambled, he came up snake eyes. Come on, Herm, you play to win the game, right? Evenly matched teams are seldom won without taking. Maybe not when you're covering Kenny Kidd. Philadelphia blitzed one linebacker and cross their nose guard and end in an attempt to pressure the supposedly immobile quarterback. But it was good secondary coverage that finally flushed Plunkett from his pass pocket where he gambled with a soft toss just above the reach of Eagle That's a heck of a throw right Herman there, man. Edwards. Alert and opportunistic, the Raiders led 14 to nothing Fuck that ball as the away, second Kenny. quarter began. Coach, we got plenty of time and we're moving the ball well. Just we've given them a couple of things. We just keep our heads and everything is fine as far as our game plan. Nothing to matter at all. But not all was well with the Eagle game plan. <laughs> Oakland's nose guard, Reggie Kinlaw, number 62, was personally shutting down Philadelphia's prize running attack. Come on! Where the hell is the nose guard coming from? Kinlaw's been uh, paying her so far. <laughs> Kinlaw proved to be one persistent lighthouse around which the storming chaos of the Raider defense revolved. Pursuit by Kinlaw and the Oakland linebackers completely took away the cutback running of Wilbert Montgomery and left the Eagles with only 69 yards rushing on the day. Unable to go through the Raiders' defense, Philadelphia was forced to go over it. Go hell, go baby! Did Carmichael make it in? I didn't see the full list of Hall of Fame. I know that he was on the list, Midway through the second which was an atrocity a considering that Jaworski Cliff Branch is getting ignored. Set up Philadelphia's first I saw Peyton. A 30-yard field goal by Tony Franklin. Oh, the barefoot kickers, remember that? At last, the Eagles had reason to hope. They're playing like we would like them to play to beat them. They really are, coverage-wise and, and everything else. Yeah. We'll get these guys. The big thing is, we're, we're all looking a little bit tight, and they look exhausted already because of nerves, and we got to get them to relax a little bit. Here's Franklin advancing on the football. Up Driving to this point, Philadelphia run had run. seemed tense, even apprehensive. Moody back takes it on the one yard line. Out to the five, the 10, straight ahead, 15. He has hit a ton of fumbles, followed on by Rod Martin. The Raiders have it. What a belt that time. Now the Raiders get the football after a tremendous lick. Ron Baker's hit was nearly the jolt the Eagles. Oh, Megatron made. got in. But as would be the case all day, the drowsy Eagles were a step behind the wide awake race. So Manning, Woodson, Calvin Oakland Johnson. Was embracing its opportunities. Philadelphia was not. But while the Eagles were not playing their best, behind almost every missed opportunity, there was a hustling rate. However, Philadelphia's worst wound was self-inflicted with 58 seconds remaining in the half. Third down, quick release, goes to the end zone, over it, thrown, and a little quick time. Oh, oh Ron. Jaworski was just goal. not good in this game at all. Raiders, as Parker really got out of the box that time and had McKinney beat. I mean, our secondary was beast, but still, like, 
Sheesh, what an awful throw. On fourth down, Eagle fortunes went from bad to worse. Snap, spot, kick on the way, it is blocked! It's scooped up by Willie Jones, he drops it at the 20, he goes back to pick it up, he's there, he fumbles again, it's on the bounce, it's on the cover. Fall on it! It's a royal melee, the Raiders have the football. Thank you, Matt Millen. No player in the history of pro football has blocked more kicks than Oakland's Ted Hendricks, number 83. The mad stork. However, none was more important than this one, for it confirmed that Oakland was winning pro football's world championship in the most convincing fashion possible. I love that shot right there. Rod, Wood, or Rod Martin's having all the fun right there, and old 62 for the Eagles is miserable. As the second half began, Raider head coach Tom Flores realized that the key to the second half would be held by his huge offensive line. Philadelphia's defense also knew this, and by Eagles blitzing their better. linebackers, the Eagles hoped to coach. break the lock, <laughs> protecting <laughs> the Oakland offense. The Raiders went out and partied. Yeah, they did. This strategy seemed to work against the run, but against the pass, where it was needed most. The blitz was useless. Upshaw, you're not getting past him. The Raiders He's the baddest dude in the, the NFL back reasonably there. Reasonably sure that unlike their first meeting, they could protect Jim Plunkett. Using a blocking scheme devised by Tom Flores, Oakland picked up every blitz and every stunt the Eagles threw at them. Plunkett seemed to have all day to throw, a painful reality that chipped away at the Eagles' composure. Philadelphia's defense may be a little frustrated. Ah, you big baby! Maybe trying to shift to another gear that isn't there. On Oakland's first possession of the third quarter, Plunkett drained a little more confidence from the Eagles' already shrinking reserves. Bob Moving Chandler, offense, you need him. 77 yards that's the guy that, on only six plays. Bob Chandler, 85, that's the guy that Al traded Foo for. Back is Plunkett, time to throw. Deep to the end zone to Branch. It is caught by Branch. Touchdown, Raiders! With the Eagle defense unsure of just what he would do next, Plunkett did what he planned to do all along. I love that. Once more, Oakland's pass protection was magnificent. What a luck to Cliff. But it was an adjustment to the ball by wide receiver Cliff Branch. This is so amazing. Against Philadelphia's rookie cornerback, Roynell Young. Look at this little movie puts on him right here. Touchdown. Goes up and gets it, and it, like, yep. The Raiders were not hammering the Eagles into surrender. They were doing it with finesse and flair, the same style that had brought them to this Super Bowl. Trailing 21 to three with over 13 minutes remaining in the third quarter. Buck is eating us alive. The Eagles still believe that the promised land was within reach. The problem was, the only road out of these bad lands was through the mountains of the Raider defense. Let's go! Look at Lester, man. That's so awesome. Knowing that Ron Jaworski was being heavily pressured, Oakland secondary laid back in zone coverages designed to take away the long pass. It's crazy to me how big Hendrix and Matuzak were for back in the day, you know? Like, they're so much taller. When you're trying to throw over and between the NFL's tallest set of linebackers, there, you go. there is little margin for error. But even but just but Matuzak too. And on a day when Ron Jaworski needed to be most accurate, 
he was not. Oh, Owens! Hands. Rod Martin's got him now. Ha! Rod Martin's second interception tied a Super Bowl record and resulted in another Oakland score. From 46, it's kicked well. And it is good. And Philadelphia is distinctly in a comeback mode now. It's the high right, play pass, 47, had him 683 flat, and the go down. Sam Blitz, Sam Blitz, Sam Blitz. Sam Blitz. They got lucky on that one. The Eagles had snowballed down the field, only to melt under the hot glare of the end zone. We got to play. Get, Get going, Howard. Ah. Ah. My boy, sit. Go away. Ow. Ow. In the fourth quarter, the legs of Wilbert Montgomery and the arm of Ron Jaworski retrieved some of Philadelphia's dignity. Let's go! But midnight had come and gone, and the Cinderella Raiders were still dancing. The Raiders right now <laughs> are in a situation to close in very firmly on their second Super Bowl championship in four years. Jim Plunkett's performance in this Super Bowl ball was the stuff fairy tales are made of. Ten years of disappointment were behind him, for at last this Cinderella was healthy, poised and surrounded by men whose abilities equaled his own. Jim Plunkett's 261 yards and three touchdown passes earned him Super Bowl 15's most valuable player award. And only a great save prevented a fourth touchdown pass. Another Chris Barr field goal concluded the scoring as Oakland ended Philadelphia's dreams of a world championship. Dick Vermeil must be feeling the sting of frustration right now. Anyone who ever said, one game cannot tarnish a great season, never lost a Super Bowl. <laughs> Good as you play to get here and play like that. Sad, uh, good way to finish the season. Give Oakland a lot of credit. They beat our butts. Yep. On the fluke. This tale was to have a storybook ending for the remarkable Raiders. A new Super Bowl record achieved by perhaps the least known of all these Cinderella stuff. Back is Jaworski, sets up really deep. Now comes up the middle, picked off. Rod Martin, the third time. Number three. And Rod Martin, once again, slams the door in the face of the man they call Jaws, a sort of fitting symbol. Silver and black football. Look at all those white jerseys, man. Our freaking defense was everywhere around the football. Oakland's victory created the sort of joyous reaction that comes with seeing something that suggests all things are possible. The Oakland Raiders, for 17 years, pro football's winningest organization, were once again the world champions of professional football. The Prince came calling, Prince Pete Rozelle. He had a silver slipper. So the Raiders became, of course, the first wild card to win the Super Bowl. I think it's a tremendous compliment to the organization because you had to win four postseason games. I think it's a great credit to you for putting this team together. You've earned it. Congratulations. Thanks very much, Commissioner. This was our finest hour. This was the finest hour in the history of the Oakland Raiders. To Tom Flores, the coaches, and the great athletes, you are magnificent out there today. You really are. And we want to welcome back the hostages to the United States. And take pride and be proud. Your commitment to excellence and your will to win 
will endure forever. You will magnificent. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go, man. Ah, oh, so cool. Love it. All right, so there we go. There's uh, there's Super Bowl 15. Really interesting um, watching Super Bowl 15 on the heels of the uh, of the Al Davis 30 for 30. Right, just getting watching that whole thing live play out or well yeah watch on the the highlights live play out but then all the reference back to um, what we knew now was going on kind of behind the scenes uh between those two guys between al and of course pete rosell and all the craziness that was going on around the raiders back then um anyways man this is this has been fun man appreciate everybody that's still there in the chat hanging in with us uh raider room mutant raider finger skate uh ron the mater raiders in there kill jadis is in the discord chat with me uh appreciate all of you that, that have uh jumped in here and checked this out happy super bowl sunday to you and uh and happy uh, uh excellent raiders week man with the 30 for 30 and now flores violator and, and and uh charles woodson going into the hall of fame so all right we got one more to get to of course this is my favorite this is uh you know even though i grew up an oakland raiders fan uh this los angeles raiders super bowl Super Bowl number 18, uh, Black Sunday. This is the last ever uh, NFL films voiced by the legendary John Facenda. And this has the absolute best lines of any of them. It's the most dramatic. It's the most, like, everything. It's just beautiful to me. Like, this is, I could watch this over and over. What's up, Raider Nation 77? Um, appreciate you jumping in the chat. Uh, I've, I've watched this one, Black Sunday, I don't even know how many times. Like, this is the first game that I, the first one I remember as a kid, like, because I was 10 years old when this when this game was played. And I remember watching it. I remember watching it start to finish. You know, when you're a little kid, you have trouble sitting there and watching a whole football game. I remember watching it start to finish and was just, like, mesmerized then and still now at 48 years old, mesmer, almost 48, mesmerized watching Black Sunday. And, and again, I've seen this thing a billion times. I'm sure you all have as well. So uh, let's do it together, man. Let's watch it together. And uh, so here we go. Let's go cue this thing up. So this is at 22.05. The great teams oh, of I played the wrong one. Have ever played oh, Murphy, football. you knucklehead. Sorry, guys. I got to reset. I picked, I picked the wrong one. I tried to replay the one. Uh, I tried to replay Super Bowl 15 again. So I'm kind of going old school, man. I got my old DVD player up here and stuff. I got the, the portable DVD or the, you know, the thing connected to my computer. So I'm kind of going... Uh, an old school here. All right, here we go. So, Super Bowl. That one. All right, so this is 22. The Redskins were in 19. The great in this team. Okay, here we go. Two years ago, when we came to Los Angeles, I really believed that the greatness of the Raiders would be in its future. And with all the great, with all the great teams we've had, I think today that this organization, this team, this coaching staff dominated so decisively that two things must be said. Not only, in my opinion, are you the greatest Raider team of all time, Thank you. I think you rank with the great teams Thank of all you. time that have ever played any professional sport. Yeah, let's go. Commitment to excellence, the motto of the race. And once again, Coach Tom Flores Fulfill that commitment in a Super Bowl. The final score, Los Angeles 38, Washington Redskins 9. They have turned back the team that many just a few weeks ago were trying to rank with the greatest of all time. They have turned them back in the most shattering fashion imaginable. Oh, that music reminds me of Terminator. So ominous. The NFL has had its great teams. They have come from Green Bay, Dallas, Miami, and Pittsburgh. But perhaps none has matched the muscle and mystique of the Raiders. Ah! What 
Put that football away, Marcus. Gosh, you guys kill me with that. Over the past 20 years, the Raiders have been the winningest team in all of professional sports. Howie! Look at Ray Guy, saving it. Woo! When history, the harshest of judges, comes to a decision on Al Davis's Raiders, it will look to Super Bowl 18 for guidance. Yes, it will. Like all athletic contests, Super Bowl 18 was not only a game, but a true test of men. Test of and men. Right from the start, the Raiders proved they had the best men. The best men. I love it. Early in the first quarter, Washington's assistant coach Wayne Sevier prepared his punting team for the game's first critical play. Pun alert. Pun alert. Hayes to punt. Greg Pruitt waits back at his own 30. Hayes needs a good punt now. He's going to have the wind at his back. High snap. He goes up. Block. It's going to be blocked into the end zone. The Raiders on a chase. It'll be recovered in the end zone. It'll be recovered for a Raider touchdown. Lightning has struck wearing black and silver. Derek Jensen, number 31, blocked the kick, and I believe he recovered it. Let's go. We can't worry about that one. Oh, yeah. That guy just took an inside charge in Otis, and he missed him. The game's first touchdown was the result of an outstanding effort by Derek Jensen, number 31 the captain of the Raiders' special teams. At the snap of the ball, Jensen cut inside of the Redskins' Otis Wansley. And when Clint Didier moved out to block Lester Hayes, Jensen had an open path to the punt. The start of the end for the Redskins. <laughs> In direct contrast to the aggressive play of the Raiders' special teams was the strangely conservative game plan of the Raiders' offense. Throughout the first quarter, it was a carefully controlled mixture of short, safe passes. So glad we have Darren Waller, man, to keep on the legacy of great tight ends for the Raiders. It was also a ticking time bomb. And early in the second quarter, it went off. Sweet old Marlboro man back there. Look at Cliff, man. Gosh, how could that guy not be in the Hall of Fame? Cliff Branch, number 21, is a talkative little receiver with a gift of grass. And although he's 35 years old, he still had enough speed to beat both Anthony Washington and Darrell Green to the ball for a 50-yard gain for the race. 35 years old, and he's still wrecking fools out there, man. There's no good reason he's not in the Hall of Fame. Two plays later, quarterback Jim Plunkett again located Branch, this time in the end zone for a 13-yard touchdown. For the second time, young Anthony Washington, number 24, was outmaneuvered by Branch. One quick inside move, and what? Branch was wide open. Another old pro who contributed to the success of this play was center Dave Dalton, whose alert block prevented a blitzing linebacker from sacking Plunk. Back is Plunk at the pass. Going into the end zone. Brand Raider Rue called that out earlier. Touchdown. Dalby starting at center for all three games, there, all three He's Super Bowls. Excited about it. Well, listen, Tom has uh, <laughs> given Grant some emotion on the sideline a couple of times. The Raiders led 14 to nothing and had scored with their special old man Willie. and their offense. But the storyline of this Super Bowl would be the Raiders' mulleted, Howie Long. and its ability to disarm and dominate the Redskins' heralded offense. Disarm the and key dominate. The in the Raiders' defense were the cornerbacks, number 37, Lester Hayes, 
and number 22, Mike Haynes. Best ever right there. The Redskins' wide receivers, Charlie Brown and Art Monk, became their reluctant partners in a demanding dance that would affect every phase of the Raider defense. As good as our secondary was in these earlier Super Bowl games, Hayes and Haynes, man, like that's the best one-two maybe ever, right? In terms of like two starting corners. It was man for man. Jam and juke, bump and run, and the coverage by Hayes and Haynes was so intimidating that neither Brown nor Monk caught a single pass in the first half. Mike Haynes almost looks like he's effortless out there. Like, it's just insane, man. And these are, like, Art Monk is no chump, like. The ability of the cornerbacks to single cover the Redskins' two best receivers relieved the Raider linebackers of certain pass coverage responsibilities. Yeah, Mutant Raider says he agrees. Yeah, man, the I... line of scrimmage and blitz more frequently. I mean, I, I'm trying to think of, like, throughout history, like, I mean, I mean, Dion and whoever was, whoever was on the other side of him, like, it's just insane to, like, have two, like, While the old school shutdown corners. pressured Joe Theismann, the inside linebackers filled the gaps to stop John Riggins. Led by number 55, Matt Millen, and Bob Nelson, number 51, the Raiders if held the mighty Riggins to only 64 yards in 26 in carries. His right. longest run of the day Absolutely. was a mere Very eight yards. Yeah, I agree, Kill Jadis. Like, it drives me nuts we can't play man coverage. Other teams were forced to use their safeties to help cover Brown and Monk. But because the Raider cornerback could cover them alone, safety Mike Davis, number 36, was free to come forward and help stop Riggins. Nose tackle Reggie Kinlaw, number 62, was another reason why Riggins could find no running room. Boy, Kinlaw's way underrated, man. Jeff Buck we don't talk about him enough. prevented Riggins from gaining yardage up the middle. I mean, dude was dominant in two Super Bowls. During the regular season, the Redskins scored more points than any team in history. But look the Raiders him, there he is. Every time you look up, 62's offense, making a tackle. And reduced the NFL's all-pro quarterback to a hesitant passer who lost Matt yardage, Miller get in making there. up his mind. With only 12 seconds to go in the first half, and with the ball on the Redskin 12, everyone expected the troubled Redskins to run out the clock and try to regroup at halftime. But Raider assistant coach Charlie Sumner had a hunch. When the two teams played in October, the Redskins had been in a similar situation and had thrown a little screen pass to Joe Washington that gained 67 yards. Anticipating the same play, Sumner replaced Matt Millen with a pass defense specialist, Jack Squirek, number 58 and instructed him to play man for man on Joe Washington. Here come the Redskins with 12 seconds to go in the half. Trailing 14 to three. Theismann back, looks off to the left and he fires it out there. Intercepted! <laughs> Touchdown! Touchdown Raiders! I don't believe it! Holy Toledo! A screen pass and they looked like they knew it was coming. Man ran right for it. I guarantee they looked like they knew that play was coming. Sumner's hunch was right. When Theismann dropped back, Squirek raced toward Washington, then picked off the pass intended for him and waltzed in for the touchdown. Whoop. Squirek's interception was the most telling blow of the game and gave the Raiders a 21-3 halftime lead. 
an electrifying stunning Howie development as Nelson in there, man. That's so cool. The proud possessor of a Super Bowl 18 touchdown. Bill, I'm flabbergasted. I, I cannot believe that the Redskins back on their own 12-yard line with 12 seconds to go in the half would do that. This is where it starts getting real ugly for the Redskins. In the first half, the Raiders had defused pro football's most potent offense. But in the second half, the Redskins showed flashes of the brilliance that had burned other defenses throughout the season. Uh-huh, yeah. This will last for about eight seconds. I'm getting chills already thinking about John Facenda's upcoming narration. He makes it about honor. In the third honor. quarter, Joe Theismann and called on a variety of receivers to move 69 yards in eight plays to the edge of the Raiders' end zone. It becomes about a story about life and Too tests of wills. It's he amazing the, the gravity that he puts he around it. Into this football game. If there's ever a team that could come back from a 21 to three halftime lead, it is the Redskins. They've scored 30, they've averaged 34 points a game. Boy, this is gonna do a lot for that whole Redskins football team to get in right here. Here's Riggins, right side, vault, touchdown, Washington Redskins. No doubt about it. And they played Redskins football all the way on that drive. They have momentum back down. They get them right back in the football game. They just showed the silver and black that the burgundy and gold has come to play. The momentum that the Redskins established was slightly dissipated on the point after. When Don Hasselbeck charged through all-pro tackle Joe Jacoby and blocked the kick. Here's the extra point. Blocked! Blocked! 87. Two Don Hasselbeck, the tight end, blocked it. The best of the Hasselbecks, it was we'll say. 21 to 9, and there was still hope for Washington. They had scored 17 unanswered points in the fourth quarter in that earlier game against Los Angeles. This time, however, the Raiders took the ball and turned out the lights. There we go. Man, gosh, he was so good. Whoop. said they were going to do it. By golly, so far, they are doing it. Dominating this Washington Redskin team. It's the music. Done that to the oh. No team has done that to the Redskins this year. All sad. Poor Redskins. Lockett giving the ball here to Allen. Cut back over the middle. Dax is three, two, one. The score, the soundtrack here, is foreshadowing what's coming up later. It was a it's geniusly written. He saw that opening, and when he did cut back, he had plenty of room and just had to sidestep one linebacker as he made it into the end zone. Scoreboard showing the Raiders 28, the Redskins 9, and we'll be right back. Late in the third quarter, Los Angeles committed a rare mistake. Cliff Branch fumbled, and Washington recovered in scoring position on the Raider 36. But the vital organs of the Redskin offense were no longer functioning, and three plays vital gained organs. only nine yards. A field goal, a field goal means a 17 will win for us by one. Although we ought to go for it here. Yeah, you should. With it, fourth and one, Riggins was the only choice. Might as well die with your boots on. Here comes Riggins, left side. No, he won't make it. 
Well, I don't know. I think it might be close enough to Major. He fell forward. Once again, it was a Raider linebacker who delivered the fatal blow. Rod Martin overpowered tight end Rick Walker, and with some help from Mike Davis, stopped Riggins short of the first down. Bah! That's a heck of a play, man. Freaking Riggins is no joke back then. I mean, he was the Derrick Henry of this era, you know? As soon as the sun went down and this became a night game, the Raiders immediately started playing There we go. As Washington's hopes faded into the dying daylight, <laughs> on came Marcus <laughs> Allen, running with the knife. Bucket giving Whoop. to Allen, sending him wide left. He has to reverse his field, but he, and he gets And he's gone. Look at Cliff. Ah, so good. So freaking good. Allen's touchdown was a play called 17 Bob Trey O. The Raiders have used it for years, but no one ever ran it quite the way Allen did in Super Bowl 18. The play was designed to go inside the corner linebacker. Yo, but Allen took it gone. too wide, he got this and ball. when he saw safety he Ken Coffey charging in, like, unblocked, oh, crap. he reversed oh, crap. his feet. I'm about to get tackled. I'm about to get tackled. I'm about to get tackled. You know what? No, you know what? I'm cool. What began as an ugly, cool. busted <laughs> play <laughs> turned into a beautiful 74-yard touchdown run. Mutant Raiders says greatest in Super Bowl history. I agree, man. Bowl. So good. I mean, it's up there with one of the greatest of all time. I mean, that's up there with the Beast Quake this for like greatest runs, run period, right? Was the centerpiece of a dazzling display by Marcus Allen, who was chosen the game's most valuable player. In the fourth quarter, Allen's ball carrying set up a field goal, and he finished the day with Look 191 yards rushing, the most ever by anyone in a Super Bowl. Put that ball away, though. <laughs> He's like he was like holding it out here. Game ruled He's by like thunder. Run around like and he like lit this. up the Super Bowl sky with a history-making performance. Let's keep dominating. Dominate him. Let's keep dominating. Let's abuse him. Let's keep dominate. No That's right. Let's abuse him. Yeah. Let's the go. The Raiders have always talked a mean game, and on this Sunday, on, they played. Oh. For the Redskins. This was a defeat the dimensions of which they had never experienced. A rout from which no honor could be salvaged. No honor could be salvaged. Oh. At the heart of this dark <laughs> was the red oh. defense. They had stripped the red skins of their most trusted weapons and sacked Joe Theismann six times. Nothing on earth that blocked or tackled or passed or ran could have stopped the Raiders on Black Sunday. Ah, yeah, let's go! Chills! Ah! Mike Davis with a safety blitz. No way Kleisman could see him. He was jolted loose from the ball, and the Raiders take it away. Here's the music. The celebration will start. What a crescendo. In Super Bowl 18, the Raiders again scaled the heights of football greatness and stood alone on the summit. A team of young men filled with promise and old veterans filled with pride. The 1983 Raiders are an honor to the team's glorious past and the world champions of pro football's present. 
Oh my gosh, that's freaking money, man. It's so good. And then they're back to the Terminator music again. Dump, dump. Mutant Raider says, love Alzado with his fist and emotion on his face. Absolutely. Uh, him and Christensen there in the end zone. Uh, Move 11. What's up, Move 11? Appreciate you jumping in. Um, man, this was cool. This was super cool, man. I, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. Like, that, I just, I will never get over the uh, the, the narration there at the end of that, um, uh, of, of, of Black Sunday there that the, um, again, the, like the gravity that he puts around it by like this making has it. been a production oops. of NFL Network. Bravo. Like, uh, you know, you just, know yeah, go, go yeah. ahead, Kill Jadis. We need to look to the future, my dudes. We need a Super Bowl now. All this stuff happened when I was not even born. It's time that we win one now. Yeah, I agree, man. It's crazy when you look back at those teams and you look at like, I mean, we're talking about a lot of Hall of Famers, right? And 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 Super Bowl MVPs, and you know, but just even the guys that like, you know, show up like Reggie Kinlaw. Like, I don't know why today all of a sudden it like jumped out at me. I'm like, freaking Reggie Kinlaw was dominant. Like, where are those kinds of guys? Like, where are the you know the the guys that kind of come out of nowhere? You know, you know what I mean? Like the guys that are they're not. You know, it's clearly like Mike Haynes is going to have a big game, but like Rod Martin, like Rod Martin wasn't a Hall of Fame player, but Rod Martin was great in these moments, man. And so, like, where are those kinds of efforts and where are those kinds of players for the Raiders nowadays? I, I'm with you, and you know, and um, I don't know, man. It, was like, this, it feels like those teams were so much deeper than what the Raiders have been, you know, in a long, long time. Like, even when we were pretty good in 2016, we didn't feel deep, right? Did you you get that sense too, Kiljadis? Oh, Kill Jadis might be gone now. Anyways, um, yeah, uh, appreciate everybody that's jumped in here in the chat. Um, keep your feedback coming, man. Uh, Mutant Raider says, thanks for showing this. Wonderful production. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate Move. Appreciate Raider Nation 77. Finger Skate. Uh, Ron the Mater Raider that was in there. Uh, Raider Root. I say Raider Root. And then, of course, Kill Jadis. Appreciate you guys jumping in. This was a lot of fun, man. I hope you had uh, as much fun doing it as I These are things that I like to watch anyways, and so we might have to make this a tradition around here. We're going to do this on Super Bowl Sunday. Unless of course the Raiders are in the game, and then we won't do that. But um, but yeah, we need to we need to get back uh, to some greatness here because um, as much as these are fun to watch, as Kill Jada says, uh, it's this was a long ass time ago. Like I mean, here I am a middle aged man, and I was a kid when this happened. So um, yeah, we need to we need Raiders need to return to greatness, need to return to glory. Um, but in the meantime, man. This is all we got. So we'll just kind of hang in there with each other and watch it once in a while. But thank you again. I can't thank you enough. Uh, appreciate everybody that's followed us on the Twitch. Uh, hit us up on the YouTubes, of course, youtube.com slash Murph's Fan Cave. And, uh, and yeah, we'll see you on Wednesday night for Raiders Fan Radio Live from right here in the Fan Cave. And uh, all right, guys, take care. Oh, yeah, enjoy the Super Bowl if you're going to watch it. <laughs> Go Bucks. Ooh.